So defining things along an axis of like good versus bad is totally understandable. We love it. We, we love, love it. it. We love it. <laughs> it's so like, like good and bad is such a tough thing where you could be like, well, this is uh, inarguably bad. Yeah, I, I could say it's inarguably bad in like a vast majority of cases. And I bet you if you and I sat down and looked at something and really looked at it, we could find some culture or some group or something where that thing is actually valued and works works for them. And then we would be putting our judgment on that group of people mm -hmm. that could be right or could be wrong. Mm -hmm. It gets it gets real easy if you're like but arguing on the internet and it gets much more complex incredibly quickly if you're having a real conversation. I'd love to talk to Joe Rogan about trans rights because Joe Rogan does multiple things to feel at home in his body. You know, I, I, I'm not an expert on Joe Rogan. I actually ignore him completely, but what I've, per, placed on him is like, this person probably does some hormone replacement therapy, probably does testosterone, um, advertises a lot of supplements, things like that. It's like, what's different about you, Mr. Rogan, than like any trans person taking hormone replacement therapy or doing things to feel at home in their body? It's like, I think we have more in common as people than, than we realize. Mm -hmm. We're all like, just trying to feel good about ourselves. <laughs> right. Yeah. But what you just said there, is counter the narrative and not, I don't want to say in generalities, but it's often counter the narrative where it's like, well, this is good. This is bad. So mm -hmm. let's say someone who's a big Joe Rogan fan might be, well, that's okay because of the X and this is why that's different and bad because of Y. And it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I think we're getting in the spaces where we're like constantly parceling out what's good and what's who's good and bad based on like three minute conversations. It's really difficult. And that's why like a longer form format uh, podcast like like this one, why I do why I do that, because I actually want to have real conversations with people. Um, your willingness to talk about all this stuff is really cool, by the way. Good. I mean, I definitely am uh, making a lot of assumptions because, yeah, I don't listen or watch Joe Rogan. I'm just putting this on him. Just my knowledge from Fear Factor from grade six. That's all I'm applying here. <laughs> you, know, you know a little bit about, you know he does, he, he promotes nutritional stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. You know he like does whatever, whatever yes. stuff for his body. So you know, you know enough to have like just the most surface level conversation. I think he plays it. a character that tries to appeal to like young lost men, mm -hmm. which is a, a group of people that tend to lean more transphobic for reasons I don't quite understand when we're really like all doing the same shit. <laughs> Can I ask you a question sure. that's not intended to, it's not intended to argue against oh, that. All good. If anyone gets on any platform, mm -hmm. aren't they courting some audience? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, we're all playing a character, aren't we? Isn't that a scary thing to think about? Well, I'd say like when I'm in my, when I'm, when I'm working, uh, with clients, I feel a lot different than when I'm just sitting around bullshitting with friends. Mm -hmm. Like I step into that, into mm -hmm. that role, uh, because clients need me to show up a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I become, I become ineffective with clients when I get too casual with them, when I, mm -hmm. and I let them in too much and I start becoming too buddy, buddy with them. Mm -hmm. So I have to uh, draw a line. But when I'm hanging out with my friends, mm -hmm. I'm like a totally different person. If I'm hanging out with our, uh, my wife and our daughters, I'm a totally different person. Not totally, but there's different aspects yes. of me. Yeah. Um, and then when I'm on the podcast, I'm way more tucked in. Like, mm -hmm. I, um, and even though like afterwards we'll edit this and all that, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be thoughtful of giving space, having the right conversations, mm -hmm. adding in my opinions. Um, so whoever it is, if you're getting up on a platform like a podcast or a band or burlesque mm -hmm. or, or whatever it is, there's going to be different levels of kind of playing to an audience. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's interesting to see like, music culture versus like burlesque culture because initially with burlesque community i thought oh these are just going to be like cheerleaders with like really good vintage music taste they're mostly lesbian nerds which is fantastic news for me my probably my favorite subculture right and i just didn't know until like you got to know these people right and then like yeah music people they tend to be like a bit more um like yeah social wanting to party um Whereas, yeah, the, I find that the burlesque community, they just want to like play board games. It's very strange.